front end is making that terrible noise. So I've just decided let's just uh, replace all the stuff, all the things here. So we've got new CV axles in their bags there. I've got new bearings in the boxes here. Okay, so I've got all the new hardware laid out here. New CV axles, new wheel bearings with the old wheel bearings in the background, and the new shocks and struts. So before I get going too much into this, I got those tires off now. I'm just going to kind of take a look at how the uh, wheel bearing is wi uh, wired in here. So what I'm doing is just taking a look at how this is working here. So this piece goes through here, hooks in here. This one is broken. Okay. Big surprise, something broken on this commander here. Just don't want to come out, do ya? Come on, bad boy, you can come Getting out. Getting these pieces separated was way more difficult than it needed to be. So these two pieces right here, I don't know, 2006, they've been stuck together, so. So you definitely need a 36 millimeter, which is, you got to plan for this, buy this ahead of time. <laughs> All right, let's get this one out. Okay, apparently these are 15 millimeters. Let's see if I can. So this bolt's a little hard to get to because it's kind of right in between that entire, whatever this piece is right here, that's their metal, I don't know what that is. There's no way you just have to feel it back there because you can't see it unless you see it back in there. But it's kind of strange that there's just these three bolts holding this piece in. Alright, we're going to lose the gloves for a second. Okay. The top piece. Alright, let's go here. Oh, I'm just trying to change direction again. There, I want you to change direction. If you want to tighten. I don't want you to fight. Okay, is this right? All three bolts are out of it.
All right. This, I don't think was making the noise. This does not seem like it was the culprit. However, it looks like it's due for a changing since I had to pull it out anyway, and I may have destroyed the lug nuts in the whole process of pulling it out. Wow, okay. Old bearing out. Here we go. Let's take the axle nut off first. Smells like something burning in here. <laughs> it's my Harbor Freight electric impact wrench. <laughs> it's gonna catch fire here pretty quick. Okay. Let's make sure we're going the right direction here. Come on. Stop going the wrong way. So if you're just doing this to change your wheel bearings out, it shouldn't, should be pretty straightforward and not too difficult. Lucky you too, if you can, if that's all you're doing, but I'm pretty sure that's not my problem. I'll definitely clean each of these up with a wire brush first before putting them back on. Oh. Got it. Okay, so that was the hardest one. The biggest pain in the butt one was this one in the back here. Let's see if I can just hit that piece. Got it. Gotta hit it with the hammer to pull that piece for it through. Okay. There we go. Thank goodness. This nasty piece of crap is off of there, but piece of crap it is, but it's still apparently working. number on that bad boy right there. I think I'm done now. I gotta go figure out how to get that one out of there. Back on passenger side. Got the 21 millimeter going up top. So that piece is about as coated as I could get it with penetrating oil. Let's see now if I could just bump those. So all the 
with this top of the shock. So far, beating that piece until I'm blue in the face is, or until hot red in the face has not worked. Let's see about uh, just taking this whole joint figure. I guess this one's going to be a camera roll. Got an 18 up here, got that one loosened up. Um, we've got a 21, 21 down here on the bottom. Guess it uh, wouldn't be a Jeep if something wasn't. Bottom bolts out. Everything's out from this steering knuckle. Steering knuckle should cooperate with me now. Oh. Yeah. Other thing that didn't need to be that difficult, but it's off. And I don't know what uh, Jeep was thinking, but they've got this piece right here welded on. Let's see if I can get to that. It's it's a welded on piece. I'm gonna try to bend that back, but if that piece wasn't welded on so that you couldn't turn this thing, and this thing had a large enough, I guess, a large enough part of the head on it that you could actually crank it with an impact wrench. Might be able to break it free, but I'm gonna have to cut somehow cut or grind that piece off of there because that's stopping it from turning anymore. I can't turn it in either direction right now, but I can't get a hold of much there because there's hardly any head to hold on to, and I don't want to round it off like I did on the other side. But uh, Gotten it out of there. 
Oh, we got it loosened out of that thing. So, I'm doing, my job includes CV axles, wheel bearings, which are over here. There's the old wheel bearings, CV axles, shock and strut combo together is my job. And look at how much I had to do just to get the shock out of there. It's still not out of there. I gotta take the top bolts out. I guess I better go pull those out of there and uh, let's see if I can actually get them. Three eighths inch. Okay, there we go. Three hole again. Long screw. Okay, so that is all fully holding you back on. There's no other screw hole again. Just like that, I have access all of the bolts. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Here we go. All of the bolts for the shots I have access to. A ten millimeter on each one of these. So once you get these goes, then you can lift up this entire bracket. Once you lift that up, da -da, there's all of my, if the lights can get to it, all of my connecting bolts for the shock strut combo. Can't just be a, be a shock like the old days. No, it's gotta be a shock spring combo. The shock just fell out on my foot. <laughs> so be careful of that. And I'm wearing sandals. Nice, dude. Hopefully it didn't take a toenail off. All right. Okay. Shock absorber is out. I could just make progress on that final piece over there. So here's my shock. Let's put that over here. Let's get it out of the way. God, that is hard to get well, through. Thanks to the Sawzall, I'm able to push this through. So it looks like I am able to save the. Uh... I'm able to save the lower control arm because this piece is not seized in here. So, but saving the lower control arm is one thing. I save this bad boy. Let's see if I can punch 
this piece out of here. If I can't punch that out of here, these things are harder to find. This design right here, not smart, Jeep. What were you thinking, Jeep? Okay, so what it appears is going on is this piece is threaded right here, comes out of that. And this piece is only threaded about there. So it's not threaded past here. If I could just punch that piece out. So that's what we'll attempt to do now. Well, thanks to my dad, the biggest challenge in this entire project has been these guys right here, both getting the, pounding the heck out of these to get the shock out of, the rusted shock out from inside this, but also getting these bolts out there. There's actually the bolt on the, the back side of this, which was completely rusted in. So luckily I was able to give these to my dad. I didn't get it on camera, but gave these to my dad. He took a blowtorch to the side that was seized in there, rusted in there, and uh, pounded it out once it was heated up with a blowtorch. So thanks to my dad, he was able to get those clear. And then, uh, of course, I cut and destroyed these bolts, and now this is my holding up my entire job. Here we are a week into this, and I'm trying to get these. I'm gonna have to go to a dealership and see if I can actually get these guys, because I ordered these online from Mopar, even put in my VIN number to make sure they were the correct ones. And as you can see here, yeah, these are not, these are too small. Whatever they go to, these are nice. Um, if they go to something on this Jeep, I'll definitely re replace them on there, but uh, I don't know what these go to. <laughs> but yeah, I ordered those from Mopar and uh, they, even, uh, they even ask for your VIN number on their website to make sure they, they're sending you the right part and this is obviously not the right part. Well, I found one. I drove to one Jeep dealership, Johnson Auto Plaza. They had one of these bolts. Fits perfect. 11 bucks. So 11 bucks for this bolt. They did tell me about another Jeep dealership which is about a half hour drive from here. So I will drive to that. So I'm over here at the Jeep dealership. I just got the second one that I needed for this bad boy. And I've got the part number here. Let's see here. That is going to be part number, head bolt, part number 6503047. Part number 6503047. Cost is a dollar more over here in North. Bend. And all these guys out here, even the nuts. I sprayed them down with rust, rust-oleum rust reformer. Hopefully that will keep the rust under control for at least the near term. Talk about a part that needs anti-seize. There's nothing in this job that needs more anti-seize than this piece right here. It's primarily right on that side. There we go. Nothing but this section right here. Okay, passenger side, partially installed, nothing torqued with a torque wrench yet, but it's in, it's in place. The side I'm dreading now, the driver's side. Okay, I think I'm back in business. Just as I was about to give up and order this 
slide hammer tool thing. The old fashioned hammer and chisel. I think that's gonna get me out of this bind I'm in here. Let's see if we can uh, show any of this here. Let's get this bad boy out. Camera tripods and power tools. Not a good, not a real stellar mix here. What? Okay, let's get this moved up here. So what I started doing is pounding on it with this guy. It's starting to come. There we go, got the catch pan ready to go. Catch hopefully all that spills I can catch here. away baby got it finally there's still it's still leaking gear oil so that's why I need to get this one again in here some wrestling now. This is the part I've been dreading the most because getting this out we are now back to the driver's side. The top side that was very difficult to get out and it's going to be very difficult to get this in here. I think the wrestling job worked. I think we made it. Alright, here we go. Alright, got the the magic stuff. I'm not calling it by its name anymore. Magic stuff is going on. going to be the 24 baby 24 well I couldn't hold the GoPro and do this but what I had to do is I had to loosen up the other side this uh X, whatever it is chalk tower brace is uh loose now I had to loosen up the other side so now I can get all of the nuts on there of course this one in the corner there is the most difficult because of the fact that it's got that wiring harness right on top of it Tighten down sufficiently, <laughs> not as much as 
That back one is not as tight as it was before, but uh, it's tight enough because it's uh, a little bit difficult to get to. So now I just need to line up these guys right here. So this one's gonna go over here. Pull that in. Get these wiring harnesses in. Okay, there, got that one on there. This piece will go on the top of that. There we go. And this piece over here. So I have these three nuts to put on those and then I'll just slide this piece over this top end, bring this piece back over here. This side will be back together sufficiently. And again, I cannot hold the GoPro while I put those back in, but uh, yeah, that's how you get to the driver's side. Still going to work. There we are. Tuck that out of the way. ABS sensors are on. Everybody's clipped in. Good to wheel go. on here to actually torque that down. But let's see if I can impact it on there. Yeah, that'll that'll work till I get those wheels on. So that's how the boot is supposed to sit in there. Let's get that grease back on there. And try that again here. Here we go. See if it'll seat on from that side. There we go. It clicked in better. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to go. And this piece is completely coated still. Get this one in here too. Squeeze it in until it, that lip goes over, until the lip goes over the uh, pivot pin or slide pin. There we go. Okay, good. We're back in business.
the other hundred foot pounds. Okay. I'm just leaving the uh, repair shop right now. Had the, the diagnosis done on this uh, Commander. It still runs so good. Too bad that it's it was a death sentence uh, diagnosis I got though. So it looks like my ring and pinion bearing is shot. So I need a whole new front differential for 2,500 bucks. And with this car being worth uh, 400 bucks, I can't. Uh, can't justify the the five hundred the twenty five hundred dollar expense here, so I think I will just either drive it till it dies, or well, let's just uh, drive till it dies, or sell it for parts. Those are my uh, options at this point. Alright, so I'm just going to drive around with a cowbell sounding car because it still runs. It runs good with all those new parts I put on it. So I think I'm just going to drive this thing till that front differential seizes up. So I'll, I won't take it on any uh, big trips or any high speed things because I don't trust it on the highway. But on my little, my little commute on these uh, traffic packed roads of north Denver area stay off the highway and I'll be just fine with uh, my ring and pinion bearing being out so uh, the brakes awesome this thing's got stops on a dime the bearings and the CV axles that I put on there awesome the new shocks and struts awesome those are so good when I hit these uh, Colorado potholes um, they really take it up well and uh, absorb the shock really good and don't sound like they're straining at all with it so this car is actually pretty doggone good right now I think I'm gonna just keep uh, commuting to work with it I don't have to take any okay Chris out <laughs>